is one of my favorite projects of the last year. Um, this is going to be Eric Adam. He's the software architect of Flywheel Sports. So let's give a round of applause to Eric. Hi, everyone. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'm going to be giving a, a talk and a little demo about uh, building microservices uh, in Node.js with um, a library we, bu we built and open sourced at Flywheel Sports called Hydra. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically I'll be giving a quick introduction to microservices, uh, very quick. Um, hopefully, you, you have a sense of what those are already. Um, and then a sort of whirlwind, through, whirlwind tour through making microservices with Hydra, um, including a demo. And then if we have time, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the some upcoming stuff for Hydra 2.0 and uh, miscellaneous topics. So uh, microservices. Uh, Martin Fowler actually has a great website about microservices, which I encourage anyone interested in using them to uh, read over. I, I took this list of pros and cons uh, from there. Um, I'm not going to try to sell you on microservices here. Uh, there are pros, there are cons. Some of the previous presenters have talked about some of the uh, complexities you introduce uh, with microservices and the trade-offs. Um, so, that's worth reading more about, but if you want to try microservices out, um, we built Hydra at Flywheel Sports uh, because we wanted to try microservices out uh, without learning a big framework. Uh, so we built this library uh, with minimal dependencies, minimal API, uh, provides some core microservice functionality. Uh, it's written in Node.js, but Hydra is really more of a set of conventions around Redis usage than a framework. Uh, so it's implemented in JavaScript now, but it could be implemented in any language uh, that can communicate with Redis. So some of the core features, uh, serve service presence, health monitoring, uh, discovery, load balancing and routing, and uh, inter-service requests. Uh, pretty much any microservice framework should have at least uh, that stuff. And so uh, we're using Redis for all of that. Uh, the uh, health and presence are just uh, strings using uh, you know, uh, key uh, conventions, uh, like Hydra, colon, uh, then a bunch of other stuff. Um, so we're using expiration and scanning and matching for uh, looking up uh, health presence. Uh, so basically, uh, services will update their presence every uh, three seconds, and that will expire after three seconds, and so uh, their presence will go away uh, if they stop responding or blocked or crash or something like that. Um, we use hashes. Uh, every time a service comes up, it registers its, uh, some information in a, in a hash with its instance ID as a key. Uh, we use sets for uh, routing. Every service has a set of routes. Um, and so that would include like whether it's a post or a get, as well as the uh, URL for the request. And then we use uh, PubSub for inter-service messaging. So uh, you can send a, a message to all the instances in a service or to a specific instance of a specific service. Um, and those are using two separate message channels. Um, and so that's pretty much all of the uh, core functionality of, of Hydra, and it's all powered by Redis, um, and it's all pretty simple, too. Uh, one of the reasons we chose to use, to, to roll our own uh, microservice framework was uh, we wanted it to be really simple. Uh, we didn't want to learn uh, a huge framework um, and, and uh, basically wanted to hit the ground running, um, and so we created Hydra. And uh, this is the uh, Hydra ecosystem, a bunch of NPM packages. Um, Hydra is the core library. 
Uh, Hydra Express is what you would probably use if you wanted to make a, like an HTTP API. Um, and it's what we generally use, uh, and it extends Hydra. Um, Hydra Router is a separate uh, Hydra service that uh, uh, handles routing uh, between uh, load balancing, routing, uh, WebSocket connections, and uh, generally you'd have it sitting in front of all of your uh, Hydra services. Uh, we've got a CLI that just makes common tasks easier to do from the command line. And we have uh, plugins. So there's a plugin library, and you can write your own plugins. And there are um, some open source plugins that we've contributed and, and some that have been contributed uh, by the community. So before I move into my demo, I'm just going to quickly just give a sense of how tiny the uh, core API of Hydra is. Um, this is, I mean, there are, there are uh, about a dozen uh, methods in the core API. Uh, these are the important ones. Uh, you basically init Hydra, uh, which allows you to operate in consumer mode, where you're not a service yet, but you can uh, make requests to services and that sort of thing. Uh, then if you want to actually become a service, you have to register your service. Um, this will make the uh, health and presence uh, start updating in Redis and that sort of thing. Um, if you're going to be serving uh, HTTP uh, endpoints, you would register those routes. And Hydra Express uh, makes that a lot simpler. Um, you just pass it an express router. Uh, send message and make API requests are for inter-service uh, communication. Um, so yeah, if I could move into the demo. Can we switch to my laptop? Yes. So to prove just how uh, easy it is to use Hydra, um, I'm going to just make a new folder. Uh, so we'll npm init, accept those defaults, and we'll install Hydra Express. And so there's two core uh, files you need uh, for a Hydra service. Um, you need a config file, uh, config.json, and uh, the entry point for the script. Uh, so we've got those files. Uh, so basically, uh, you can put anything you want into uh, config.json for the application level config or the service level config. Um, the Hydra config requires, uh, it needs to be on the Hydra key. And so that's like the only reserved key in these config files. Uh, so there's a few required um, fields, which I'll fill in here. And then we're using the, uh, the URL format, but this would also accept like standard uh, connection information for the Node Redis package. And so our configuration is done at this point. That's everything uh, a Hydra service needs to get off the ground. Uh, and then I'm actually going to copy and paste this just to save everyone watching me typing. Um, but 
but it's really not a lot of code. What did I call this? So this is going to demonstrate a few different things. Um, as you can see, we pull in Hydra Express, and then Hydra is available uh, from Hydra Express. Um, and we just have this little uh, run method which uh, gets an express router object, which is uninitialized, um, adds a route, a couple of routes to it, uh, standard express stuff. Um, except that it returns the instance ID, which I'll be showing uh, load balancing with. And uh, so this is essentially ready to run at this point, uh, I hope. Fortunately, I have the uh, other one in case it's not. Oh, I didn't hit save, that would do it. So this is now running, and we can, uh, just quickly, uh, um, curl it, so you can see, uh, let me pipe that. So JQ. Uh, so you can see it's just returning hello world and the instance ID, nothing fancy. Uh, but what I will uh, now show you is what Hydra router looks like. So I'm just going to clear out the old information here. So you can see we've got Hydra Router and the demo service that I just wrote. Uh, they're both Hydra services. Um, if I kill the demo service, it should stop updating its presence and turn red um, here. It takes a few seconds to refresh. There we go. Um, and so I'm going to demonstrate the load balancing that Hydra Router provides real quick. Uh, so what I'm going to do is change this service port to zero, which will make it select a random port for the service. Uh, and so now I can just spin up two of these. So we sh should see two of these running. Yep, and that one that I killed. So uh, now what we can do is, you'll see these are on random ports. Uh, and instead of curling to, uh, oh, I need that. So now we would just curl to the port Hydra Router is running on with the same route. Um, oops. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, uh, the instance ID is changing uh, between that 723A8 and the 6BE38 uh, hashes. And uh, so that's the built-in load balancing. Um, and so basically this allows you to, as you can see, uh, make extremely simple uh, and very easy to understand uh, microservices using JavaScript. 
and Redis, um, and you're not tied into JavaScript. Uh, if you, we would love it if someone would contribute uh, an implementation of Hydra in another language. Um, and so yeah, I mean, uh, some of the other presenters have brought up some of the challenges with uh, microservices and uh, that like HTTP APIs often aren't enough. Um, Hydra does support other things. We just uh, you know, built Hydra Express because HTTP APIs are a very common use case and uh, this lets you hit the ground running with that. Uh, so the demo's over. And so yeah, we, we do have a plugin system. Uh, in general, we try to do uh, new feature development as plugins, um, and you know we don't want to pollute the uh, the core library. Uh, we want to keep it as minimal as possible. So uh, we have plugins for JWT authentication, logging, uh, RPC, um, and it's very very easy to write your own. Um, Hydra also plays really well with Docker. Uh, we, we have some scripts that let you just basically npm run docker build and it'll generate a docker file for you and, uh, um, and you can also store your config.json in Redis, um, which makes it a little easier than trying to mount it in, in your docker image or whatever. Um, and it also supports health checks. Um, so it's really quick to get up and running with Docker. Uh, and then uh, our plans for Hydra 2.0 uh, include a refactor to TypeScript and async await. Uh, we built uh, Hydra against, you know, the uh, Node 6 and uh, Redis 3. So uh, we'd like to use TypeScript, use async await now that that's in the LTS node. Um, we'd uh, we're on the Node Redis um, JavaScript uh, library. We'd like to move to IO Redis. And uh, again, we built it to support Redis 3. We'd like to start introducing some Redis 5 and even Redis 6 features. Um, and this is an open source project, and uh, contributions are always welcome. So yeah, that's, that's my talk.